March 3rd, 1944. Bo Jack would take on Bob Montgomery, New York's Madison Square Garden. He would lose to him in 15 rounds. But he was still recognized in the state of New York as the world championship fighter. But he didn't have the hardware. Bob Montgomery now had it. March 17th, he would be taking on Al Bummy Davis, New York's Madison Square Garden. He would defeat him in 10 rounds. Al Bummy Davis was a numbers runner. Walked with a limp. And my grandfather knew him. My dad knew him as well. And he was one of them guys. You didn't mess with album Davis not because of fear of him per se you had the respect of him he was that kind of guy but he worked for the mob and when he approached you you know you owed them money it was nothing personal there he just gave it to him then he talked to you about the horse races that you want to put some money on he's also there to collect money for horse racing and collecting money for other things, you know. But he would play the numbers and he was there to collect the, the money for the numbers. But then Bo Jack would have to take on Johnny Greco. Took him on twice, February 8th and May 31st of 1946. Take on Buster Tyler. October 22nd, 1946. He would lose to him in 10 rounds and they would fight in Elizabeth, New Jersey. But February 21st, 1947, he would take on Tony Gennaro in New York and he would stop in four rounds. And this would become a problem because Bo Jack was taking his eyes off the prize a little bit there. He was going out and he was going dancing and hanging out. And he wasn't focused as he once was figures he was learning a lot of the tricks of the trade from Henry Armstrong. I got this. I got this. Sort of an attitude he had at that time. But Bojack's problems didn't come until July 12th, 1948, Philadelphia. He would take on the New York Sack lightweight champion from Trenton, New Jersey. His name was Ike Williams. Now, Ike Williams got that title from Bob Montgomery in 1947. Just a quick background with Ike Williams. He would become the NBA lightweight champion when he defeat Juan Zarita, Mexico City, knocking him out in two rounds. And Ike Williams would not be able to celebrate his victory in the ring. They would throw things at him bottles and half-eaten sandwiches and popcorn and whatever they had in their hand at the time. And he would have to run back into his dressing room. And it wasn't until he went to the State Athletic Commission to be presented with his belt that he would actually be recognized as champion. Well, Ike Williams would defeat Bob Montgomery, 1947, and he would now unify the New York SAC and the NBA belts. But the commission did not recognize Ike Williams as champion. He would recognize Bob Montgomery because Bob Montgomery was a Philadelphia native. And Ike Williams took offense to that. So when he met up with Bo Jack, Bo Jack was always respected in Philadelphia. So Ike Williams plan on getting his respect through Bojack. But Ike Williams liked Bojack. And it wasn't until Bojack would do his famous bolo punch that he learned from the Battle Royales. That that bolo punch would uplift the roof of Ike Williams' tooth top side tooth and all hell would break loose 
This was towards the end of the fifth round. And Bo Jack would hurt, be hurt by Ike Williams at the end of the fifth round. So at the beginning of the sixth round, Ike Williams would take Bo Jack, pin him in the ropes, and he would hit him with a 42-piece combination. And he would send him to the corner and open up everything at him. Uppercuts, left hooks, right hand. Oh. Referee would go from side to side as though he was trying to get a better seat in the arena because he didn't want to stop that action. Nothing he hadn't seen or been a part of before. Didn't know when the next time he was going to get that kind of action. And it, rem it reminded me of when a Turagati was hurt in the 10th round with Ward, Mickey Ward. Referee was Frank Cappuccino. Said later on that he would never stop that fight. And the HBO telecast was screaming for him to stop that fight, Frank Cappuccino. He wouldn't stop it. He said he wouldn't make it out that arena had he stopped that fight. And he knew he would never see another fight like that again. Same thing with Dr. Romeo, when marvelous Marvin Hagler was brought over by Richard Steele to check out the cut. Dr. Romeo never spoke to Hagler, never looked at him, told Richard Steele to let him continue. The cut is not bothering him sight, let it go. He knew he was not going to see a fight like that again. And sometimes that happens. The referee just says, the hell with it. I'm enjoying this one. So when Bo Jack's head was being snapped from side to side, he was being punched in the throat, in the shoulder, in the arms, in the sternum, in the bed basket, the ramius muscle, mandibular, the temple. It got to a point when the commission started to walk over, when the referee stopped the fight. And the only thing that was holding up Bo Jack, his arms were hooked on the top rope. It was the most brutal contest that you would see in that lightweight division during that time. Now you had rougher fights than that with Balling Nelson and his time, with Ad Wargas and Owen Moran and Joe Gans and, you know, that era. But that was some time for Bojack. So Bojack was, for me, one of the top lightweights in boxing history. And Sugar Ray Robinson once told me when I had a talk with Robinson, because I met Robinson two separate occasions, that you didn't visit the hotel until you stopped that Bo Jack's shoe shine box. It was the most famous location to visit. It was a landmark. And Bo Jack would make more money on that corner than he would in certain fights because he would be paid $100 tips, $80 tips. At that time, by famous celebrities, because they wanted to take a picture with him. He was their idol. So I just wanted to share the story of Bo Jack. I thought it was intriguing. Bo Jack was a hell of a fighter. A hell of a humanitarian. But he said... He's a fighter. He's in there to fight. You have to kill him right in that ring when you got him. Because he's going to fight. He's not going to back up and he's not going to run. And I respected Bo Jack. From those words that he said. Because that's what a fighter is. A fighter fights until he has no more fight left in him. A fighter takes himself. And the environment in which he chooses to be in 
with total respect. He understands that he may not come out the same or even alive. However, he chose to be a fighter. He chose to be a fighter. And when you're in there fighting a man, you're not a fighting him. You're fighting his spirit. You're fighting his name. You're fighting his reputation. You're fighting who he believes to be better than you. And when you fight six times to 12 times in a month, when you're fighting the greatest of your era, You're a fighter. Bo Jack and obviously Henry Armstrong has been placed on this list. Curtis Anderson and myself had to make sure that men who belong on that list are placed and remain on that list. Let's take a look at Bo Jack in action. Oh, 
fighter. They both have a tremendous following. In his last fight six weeks ago, Bojack won a 10-round decision from the hard-hitting Tony Gennaro in Washington, D.C. Bojack likes to fight in close. Mike Williams likes to box in long range. The champion, Ike Williams, is 25, two years younger than Bojack.
definitely be the stronger of the two fighters. Sharp, jolting punches by Ike Williams. Williams pouring it on, a barrage of punches. Bojack is in trouble. Bojack staggers backward into the corner. Williams pouring it on. Jolting punches, ripping combination. Williams asks the referee to stop the fight. Raised 36 mil for the war overseas. 
four classics with Ike Williams. I was past my prime, so I couldn't quite get him. But no matter what, I always hung right with him. Fight critics remember how I used to paint. Them. Coming in very low now with two left hands to the chin, shooting them straight in there. Going into a crouch, swinging the left hook that is wild, going into the one two. Navolo extends the chest into the ropes. The perpetual motion man from down in Augusta is really roaring in there tonight.